Do it. Do it. Come on, kill me. I'm here. Come on, do it now. Kill me. Schwartzy, the podcast. It's a Schwartzy show. All right, so um, we're kind of doing a retool of this podcast. Um, oh, we're starting? Yeah, oh. it's it's basically, um, it's called Schwartzy the Podcast. And we've kind of invented it because we want to spend time with each other uh, and watch Schwartzy movies and talk about ourselves and just see if we can do it in an interesting, uh, interesting way, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think I, th- I thought you were going to plan. I, I thought you were like going so strict before. This is so much better. I like this so much better. Yeah, no, I don't want to go strict. I want to go casual. Like, OK, yeah. All right. All right. I mean, I want to be strict in the sense that we're going to, you know, we'll we'll introduce ourselves. So I'm Milenko and I'm Alex. Nice to meet you. OK, so yeah. we're doing Conan the Barbarian. Conan the Barbarian is about. Um, Wait, hold on, hold on. I, can I, can okay. I can I just I, this is still the Marin happening here. <laughs> God. Um I wanted to say that we decided that we've recorded several episodes of this already. Yes. Oh man, dude, you're not going to say he's just going to decide out of the fucking blue <laughs> to rip us off. He's just going to decide. Um I think that we're just going to decide to jump into golden era Schwartzy, right? So the idea behind the podcast was to do all of Arnold's movies of all time. And we got four episodes in, and then we kind of realized they were a slog because it's all like weird, like side characters. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some good movies in there. Stay Hungry is a wicked movie. Am I right? Yeah, Stay Hungry was great. Yeah. And um, and what else was good? Oh, The Long Goodbye. Yeah, but like, I mean, hardly a movie, <laughs> hardly defined by it. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger's appearance. Yes. So that's the whole point is that we're going to decide to start from what we express as Golden Era Schwartzy, yeah. which is Conan the Barbarian. That is the first episode. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. I would even, like, I mean, I would say stay hungry. I don't know. Like, I'm down with stay hungry. I mean, but but there's just, weird stuff in between, yeah, like that true. weird it's cowboy true. movie that <laughs> I, I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch that movie. I got to be honest. Uh, can you stop playing with the cat? Yeah. Okay. All right. Conan the Barbarian. It's directed by John Millius. Millius. Mil- what is it? Millius. M- what, say it again. Millius. Millius. Oh, yeah. I thought there's an N in there. Millin- Millinus? Millinus? No. I th- I always thought I always thought it was Milius. No, there's an there's an N in there. Milinus. Milinus. All right, cool. I've been saying it wrong for decades at this point. Oh my god. <laughs> um, that's okay. You're forgiven. Uh, it's also written by Oliver Stone. John Milinus and Oliver, Oliver Stone. Stone. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, dude. And I was like, wait a minute. The Oliver Stone. <laughs> that. And to the left. Can I can I just say though? Can I just say what's a fascinating uh, sort of uh, just a tangent on on Please. both those people? Please. Uh, one is like a hard hard right winger, and the other is like a hard left winger. Okay, so who is the hard right winger? Oh, who do you think is a hard right well, winger? Is it Oliver Mil- Stone? No, it's not fucking Oliver <laughs> Stone. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, so- no, but that's like, a, but that's like incredible. But like, let me just say, Wait, like, so John, Al- John. John- Oliver <laughs> is the right winger. Okay, I got it. Hello there, I'm John Oliver. No, but like, I, it's just, I, I just find that, I mean, for for the kinds of, of people that, like, are involved in the movie, mm-hmm. like, I, I guess, like, realistically, the 80s wasn't a time where, like, things like popular culture were looked at in, in the, in, like, such an intensely political lens. Okay. But to, but to function on a level of, like, oh, this insane, and Oliver Stone is insane, mm-hmm. this g- guy who's, like, I'm gonna go down to, like, Latin American countries that, like, America's destroyed and, like, go and explore that era that like to to now where he's like made that putin tapes oh, yeah. documentary yeah, he's- we're going to build a wall and, and with but like contrast contrasting that with this fucking insane gun nut of a person who, who millinus millinus yeah wow fucking insane person who is just like everything from that he's made 
And like what like what are so like apocalypse now things things that like you would never associate with uh like a person who is a right winger. I mean, then again, he wrote fucking Dirty Harry. Go ahead. Make my day. And like oh, a couple really? of the Dirty Harrys. Okay. But then again, like like I said, you you see something like Apocalypse Now, which feels like a like a very... Like a critique. A critique, yeah. yeah a a, a sure. self-reflection on like war and insanity and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so this movie um, opens up with... Like, it really gave me a first-year philosophy boner. Uh, it opens up with a Nietzsche quote, which I'm not sure, like, I feel like Nietzsche is often, like, misquoted because it just, like, sounds epic. It's like, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And, like, I feel like he was just having weird, you know, like, realizing things about um, being a nihilistic are existentialist we, talking about <laughs> we are talking about Nietzsche because he was having things about being a nihilistic existentialist and he was being like hey whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger yeah. new metal but, oh, ah! yeah exactly exactly and then you know like Jonathan Davis oh, like he like <laughs> captured it and would like be glorious and, Nietzsche, and uh, Marilyn Manson was like I uh, love the works of Frederick Nature. I think that moshing is a, is a sign of uh, what Christians would call uh, the apocalypse. And you're just like, okay, dude, we get it. You're so glorious. <laughs> you're epic um, and glorious. But, but you know, in, ni in 1982, um, being a glorious, it wasn't, it hadn't quite gotten its new metal. Peak um, new metal? Yeah. <laughs> well, we weren't in new metal at all in, uh, <laughs> in uh, the 1980s. So, uh, you know, they were totally cool to use their quote. One thing I wanted to ask you about is... Before we even get into this, what universe is this movie set in? Because I don't know anything about the Conan comics, but like, is this, you know, our world adjacent? No, no. Is it a different universe? It's for, fully a different place. But here's the, here's the excellent thing about the movie. And we'll get, we'll get into the conversation of, of like what you personally thought about the movie. Cause I have, I think I have a very, I'd have a very different experience with this movie. Um, than me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, like I want to go through, like, I want to go through the plot go with the, you. Well, like, I mean, the, the plot is simple. It's no, I know, well, but I want to just go through everything that happens. Cause like, we'll go through everything okay. that let's just explain what the, what, like the plot is, um, Conan, as mm -hmm. a boy, witnesses his family and his entire village destroyed by a Thulsa Doom. <laughs> Who is played by James Earl Jones. Yeah. And I, one of the things I wanted to comment about as the opening, you see the, in the opening credits, you're like, James Earl Jones. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, wow, legendary voice actor. And all of a sudden we just hear, this voice <laughs> is the narrator of this movie. And I'm like... That's kind of a wasted opportunity. You have James Earl Jones and you make this guy narrate the movie. But also he's like amazing in it. Everybody, everybody's dude, amazing. James Earl in Jones it. in this movie is unbelievable. Yeah, dude. I was like, okay, so let's let's talk about this cuz um in the beginning um you know, there's a, there's a blacksmith cutting a sword, you know, putting it in a mold. It's cool as fuck. I was like they're, already they're building Ar Arnold like Conan's dad's sword in the in I know, the beginning. I know. I it's, it's so set up. There's so many setups. It's amazing. To the it's amazing. And and so, you know, you see this young woman in, in the, the young blonde woman in a fire um his dad okay i wanted to talk to you about this i was so excited to talk to you about this his dad who fucking is that guy yeah, I know, he's like, I know. He's, like so, he's so majestic and like his face is so like cavernous like it's just like he's like got the most groovy face like just yeah. like he looks okay i wanted to tell you about this he looks like a, 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 a 1980s mid 50s. Yeah. So like fully, a guy who's fully. who's in his mid 50s in the 1980s with the cigarette smoke and the like alcohol. And somebody so, somebody is like, oh yeah, that's like a pretty good 50 in the 80s for sure, for sure. <laughs> but like this guy looks like he's in about like uh, his his early eight, 80s in 2019. Um, he's pretty fucking haggard looking. <laughs> and like this is his this is this young boy's dad. <laughs> Um, so I thought that was really funny. Um, and then of course his, uh, his daughter or his daughter, not his daughter, but his wife is like a super, super attractive model. blonde. She's literally a supermodel, oh, yeah. but I have to say her, 
um, she really like sold this role dude, with no dialogue. no dialogue. Dude, there's almost no dialogue in the movie. In the movie, I it's know. Crazy. I was, I was like, so impressed. Everything is done in visuals. Everything. I thought it was really cool. And like, there's a lot of montage, but you don't mind it. Cause like, so even in the beginning, there's just like montage after montage and like just voiceover and yeah. just this guy. And you kind of like get into like the mythology of it. It's yeah. really interesting. Very interesting. Basically, this dad is like teaching him some kind of lesson. Like you can't trust anyone but your sword. And... Um, you can't trust women. Don't forget. That's, you can't he, trust did, women. he did specifically say you can't trust women, which, you know, I, I guess plays into the, like, this movie is super misogynistic. I don't think so, okay, dude. Okay. Like, I real yes, fine. He pushes a witch into a fire. No, and- not only that, not only that, he later, when he's, okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but later he forcibly has sex with a woman. Yeah, for sure. Fully. 100%. Fully has forced. After not, never seeing a person just spinning a wheel for decades. I know, but like, yeah, like you gotta have some sense. Like he knows it. It didn't feel good to get abducted and turned into a slave. So why would it feel good for him to? So I guess I mean I guess this is just the universe we're in in this uh, in this um, in this movie, the world of this movie. Okay, so the, these snake worshippers. Um, I called them the the like banged crew. They oh, all yeah. they, they all had bangs, like yeah. they all have nineteen eighties like like big hair rocker bangs. bangs. I was like I was like oh my god <laughs> like are they really going with this look for everyone? And then they kill this whole town. Um, the woman who plays uh, Schwarzenegger's mom has this amazing look on her face. Yeah. I was like the look in her eyes was like crazed yeah, it's, like i'm it's like devastating. Gonna, i'm gonna defend this kid like she acted the shit out of yeah. that bit part i was like kudos lady holy shit well like i, I mean the the fascinating thing is like you said uh, everybody is everybody's surprised uh, like surprisingly really good in the movie uh, yeah okay but I did. I actually hadn't seen the movie in so long, so I didn't remember. I mean, of course, the mom's gonna die. Yeah. But like, because that just has to happen oh, in like a movie like the, this. Like the most. I think that's the only. Like the only two images that I remember from the movie from childhood is at the end when he's got a beard. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And and that scene where it's just a wide shot of him. Yeah. And you don't see her head, and then it just like you see Tulsa that was Doom. Incredible. Like spin around. Around, yeah. Spin around, cut her head off, and then the head just falls into frame, totally. and her body falls from the side of the frame. It's like, like truly, like what filmmaking is. I, it's like, I, oh man, it like, was a beautiful. I don't care that you're a crazy white winger. John, John Mill is. This is amazing. <laughs> I, I was, I, I could not believe, like, and his just like his eyes and his intensity, like he didn't, you know, make a snarly face or no. anything. He was just like so calm and collected. I just thought they, this was like a masterfully acted scene on all accounts. The kid was good too. The kid surprisingly looks a lot lot like like Schwarzy. He looks like the young love child of Schwarzy. He fully does. Doesn't he? He fully does. Like the, the one he had with the maid. So the kids from this town get taken to like this internment camp or whatever, where they're like, I guess like they're they're spinners like they're running a, a big a, wheel. They're around. running pushing a big wheel, which is like a, like a mill. Is it is it a mill? I I, what is this wheel about? Like, something something that I noticed watching the movie, and what I noticed with like amazing people, amazing storytellers in general, like Steven Spielberg, is yeah. that they can pull off scenes that fully don't make sense at all, and you don't think about them. You're right. At, you're right. At, at, at and this point, was one of those scenes. This we're was, just like well, like why who cares and and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and it totally fits with the tone of the movie how the movie has this um sort of feel where it's like this movie is allowing you into its own world like it's like hey this is what we're about this is yeah and i thought that was incredible and the 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 I, I feel like the the two things that make it that way are one no dialogue, uh, and That's the other true. is every everything is wide. 
That's true. Everything That's is shot true. away. They, that they was just, really they cool. Don't, they don't hide from any, and the fucking production value is Unbelievable. so Unbelievable. insane. Unbelievable. I was like, it's what? so insane. So, Schwartz is a slave. Um, I'm not even going to call him Conan. Schwartz is a slave, and somewhere around the 16-minute mark, we first see Schwartz, where I thought that, you know, every time we first see Schwartz, and we mentioned that we first see Schwartz, we should say the minute mark and do a little ding. <laughs> oh, so, man. I'm definitely going to do that. <laughs> um... I didn't know is that about a, this. <laughs> is that a wig? Is that a wig? The thing is, this, okay, this is the big thing. It, like, there's a transition point where it's like a terrible wig <laughs> into his real hair. And it's when, it's it's like when, a, he, gro- yeah, it's when okay. he grows, like they first have the wig on the kid and then they have the wig on him. And it's like, man, this is horrendous. But it gets better. Like, he, he, it does, he fully rocks... He like does long he, hair he, after, and you can tell it's a wig based on the fact that you can see scalp. Yeah, when, when yeah, <laughs> yeah, to a certain point. Yeah, I, I thought that was really. I mean, I was like, I knew it was a wig. There's going to be a lot of wig discussion, I think, throughout this thing of like various people wearing wigs or pieces or if they have plugs. Uh, we will be sure to point that out. So one of the things that I love about this movie is when they, it, the montages. We're Let's talk about the montages for a second because we he see here like I think the second or third montage in the movie of like this wheel being pushed around, right? This mill being pushed and fucking there's always a winter scene. There's always a snow scene. They never they're like, oh, this is the passage of time. Here's a season, oh, yeah, here's winter. Course. Um so years have passed. He's a slave. Um we see a bunch of people clamoring in this next scene and I actually thought this was such a weird choice for the the BG, the background actors in this. I was like, my God, it's, BG! It's a bunch Jesus. of it's a bunch of kids. It looks like it's a bunch of kids of the crew members. Like they're like I wasn't paying attention. You were paying attention <laughs> no. to that. Okay, all right. The reason I mentioned this is because it goes to a really cool scene that I thought was actually a really hot kind of homoerotic scene um, where, where Schwartz is brought to fight this fucking jacked dude who, like, you think is going to kick Schwartz's ass because he's, like, so much... Like, he's, like, like almost a meter taller than him. It's amazing. And then... Just a meter? Well, not a meter. <laughs> he's, like, a head taller than him. And then, like, he pushes him down and there's this really sexy scene where he's, like... They're being just like two muscly dudes. And I was like, whoa, I really like where this ultra right wing conservative guy's going with these shots. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, Schwartzy fucking smashes his face and beats him the fuck up. And, and, and then there's a montage of him killing literally everyone, like just being the most glorious battler ever. Yeah. They teach him like school. They yeah, like they, like, they teach like, him philosophy. Teach him, like, philo- <laughs> yeah, they teach him like different languages and philosophy, which I thought was a nice touch that they said they teach him different languages. It could explain the accent. Why? Yeah, yeah, and also why he can speak to everybody. And and then he gets like he we're like it's implied heavily that they go to like the east to like Asia or something, and he gets taught by this like uh, Asian like martial arts master who kicks the guy in the balls. Do you remember that scene? He kicks the random guy. The balls beside him, I, that uh, was... like like they're they're at like a temple learning something, and then he shows Schwartzy something, and then immediately just kicks the dude, the other dude that's there in the balls. Like what a weird. Yeah, yeah. No, I was I thought that was so weird. And they said he's taught the philosophy of Sung, so I wanted to imagine that it was the philosophy of Nunyan Sung from <laughs> Star Trek, and that it was like a like a crossover or not crossover, but it's in the same universe. I'm an android, but also like it's. Wait, can you indulge me that it's in the same universe? Probably it's in the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, why not? I mean, there's weird shit in like Star Trek all the time. It's true, it's it's true. Just, and like, it's the similar graphics. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, but I would say that, um, yeah, I mean, then he gets like released. No, one no. more thing happens. He's in a cage and he has a woman brought to him. That oh, he, yeah. That he's that like, he first, like, you think he's good because she's know, naked he, she's and you naked. think he's going to be a good dude and puts like a blanket around her and then he like sits her down and he like, they do like this creepy cutaway of just his face of like, ah, yeah. he's like, like so horny and like going to do her and he's happy about it. And nowhere on her face did it ever look like she was like warming up to the idea. No. She's just terrified the whole time. It's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. 
this was fully a rape scene. I was like, I can't, like, it was, it was. Yeah, it, it is. I'm, I'm not, to, that's not what I'm laughing at. I'm laughing at the fact that it's like a really incredibly dated, I guess dated way of. It is, it is. It's I mean. So, it's dated, I know, but like. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't actually, because like, I was talking to um, Jeff about this. It's, it's weird how many kids movies were just like R rated movies that were designed for kids toys. Because Almost totally. every single Arnold movie that is that about we love toys is 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 fully Predator, Aliens, uh, Conan. It's like crazy to think that so many so many things were just geared Aliens. I know, man. Aliens were like there was, toy- was toys. They're unstoppable, but we've got to give it our best shot. Under the we they invented a toy, toys. Apex. All right, all right. Let's just, we're getting like too deep far. cuts. All right. What I what I wanted to say was that you're missing the also bull alien. Another, the, yes, the bull alien. We all know, and also the gorilla alien. Gorilla my alien. favorite. Um, all, uh, let's be honest. The queen was the coolest. The queen was the coolest. Although it would have been wicked if they had a sack to sell with the queen. They just had oh, the, the yeah. and on her hip, you could press it, and press she it like sw- swung, swung her tail, swung her tail yeah, around. Was sick. Um, okay, so uh, you missed the, the most important scene where he says, what is important in life to crush your enemies? Hold on. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and they hear the lamentation of the women. That is good. Like, he does that amazing, amazing fucking scene. Uh, and then the redheaded guy releases him, which I thought was cool because they actually, if you follow along, when it's the young Schwartzy, it's a young redheaded kid. And then they have him in the future <gasps> and he's got a beard and he's the same kid. And you could tell that he has like a kinship. Is that what? Yes. What he was? Yes, dude. You could tell that he has a kinship because he knew this guy since he was a That's kid. That's amazing. Isn't that That's such amazing. an interesting touch? That's- so good. I'm so, so there's glad so I- no dude, there's so many things in the movie that are just like, whoa, that that was like in the first fucking scene. I'm so glad I caught that. I was like, yeah, anyway. So um he runs away, wild dogs chase him, it's lots of montages. And then wait, while the dogs chase him in another scene, it fully cuts from him not wearing any clothes to wearing the skins of the dogs. Oh, yeah. I was like, that was like, Whoa, so, speaking of I, small touches, that's cool. that was like, such totally, an outrageous thing. That was really cool, for sure. Um, so, uh, remember the scene with Krom? Krom. Krom. Oh, when he's like in the cave and he yeah. sees all the skulls and, and the shit. bones fall yeah, over because he takes the sword. Yeah, so he's in that cave. Um, and he then gloriously looks over at the camera. I love that yeah, scene. There's a lot of like nods in this movie of like, hey, we're we're with you. This is a movie. Yeah. It, I, I thought it was like, cool. Like uh, the thing is, like uh, I was talking to a friend thinking like there are no good fantasy movies. Ever, ever now ever yeah really. remember we had willow we willow, had like legend uh fucking uh never ending story i would throw into that uh, what about lion fucking witch in the wardrobe the, 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 the bbc, BBC one yeah oh that was my so god good. uh what's it I'm called? so glad you were on F- board for fucking, that uh what's it called what's that movie uh that everyone loves that we never watched as kids uh, with Fred Savage. Oh, <laughs> wait, the one where they're under the Princess bed? Bride. Oh, yeah. the Princess Bride. Um, I thought you were talking about the ones. No, Do you remember the monster under the bed? That's kind of a fantasy, too. <laughs> it's kind of a fantasy, but that's like a different kind would of fantasy. Count, would you count um, the, what's the the Tummy Wiggle movie? What what's that movie where the guy wiggles and stuff? Also, oh, Goonies. Oh, Goonies. The, that's another movie we didn't, we didn't watch as kids. <laughs> Not T- good. Tummy wiggle? What is that uh, thing? Yeah, uh, First you gotta do the truffle shuffle. I forget. <laughs> oh, okay. So I think the next scene um, that we have to talk I mean, about. You don't have to go scene by scene. Well, I, I, no, I just want to talk about like the scene where the woman um, invites him to her bed. She's like, it's warm here. Mm. I gotta say, like, I thought that the sexy scenes in this movie were really like on point it was sexy in a way that i think movies aren't lately they show a lot of like kind of it, why is that if you notice in the movie what what i saw in the movie was that everything is framed 
either wide or something is in the middle of the frame. Okay. And you're always in the middle of the frame. And See, I that's think that's something I wouldn't have noticed because I don't look at, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't look for that. But that's interesting that you mentioned that. Well, it's just like, I, like I, not- I started noticing it throughout the movie because quick, th- quick cuts would happen sometimes and yeah. you would still know what was going on. And then I'd like flashed back to uh, watching Fury Road in the theater and it's such a frenetic movie. Right. And everything is happening all at once, but somehow you can still retain the information so are you saying that this the the the, the sexiness of this movie is played up by yeah by yeah. that kind of framing or, yeah yeah okay and interesting. also because they do they have this sorry to interrupt but they have this like medium shot of her kind of like crawling over to him oh yeah when i was like that's cool you don't ever see a person move like that in a movie yeah you know yeah uh so i thought that was interesting they start having sex though and she's a fucking demon also yeah, she's a witch, Sorry, and, okay. and, and he pu- pushes her into, into a, a fire. fire. <laughs> but here's another thing that was interesting about this movie. I think I I can't remember another movie with Arnold having sex with somebody. He, I cannot yeah, and remember. It's another good, movie. you know. Like he's it's got always this, like, implied. It's always right, implied. He never right. really has sex scenes. You're right, and he had. Some, he was pretty good. Like it yeah, was like he was like was an nice attractive to, guy. Yeah. It was like nice to watch these two attractive, attractive people, young people go at like, it. Yeah. Um. You know, So like, there's this glorious back muscle shot that I thought was pretty great. <laughs> you could see those wings going on, and then um, and then everything starts going black, and like they start screaming, and she starts clawing at him, and he throws her into a fire which is and she turns into a demon and flies away and then he says Krom again Krom. which is we find out his god right yeah didn't, um, it, didn't didn't the dad explain that that's his god he's like I we only we that. only follow Krom Krom, Krom is at the bottom oh you're right everyone yeah, is on the top and it's like why is he at the bottom <laughs> he's yeah yeah well we t- they Krom talk is about, a power bottom he talks <laughs> power bottom Krom um, he talks to Subutai who he meets who is in the, in the next I scene I fucking love Subutai <laughs> he is so amazing also their entire relationship is purely shown visually through just a series of montages you're right they, I have, see. they eat food once together and they're just like well I best guess we're friend. fucking best friends dude <laughs> and it's, it's like, true but, it's but true it's, it's like them like frolicking together and just like having fun like having a good time there's so many times where people are eating together talking to each other and just having a fucking good time like when they fuck Subutai comes in he he meets Arnold and they go to that fucking city where where they meet uh, what's her name Valeria Valeria Valeria. hold on I wanna I wanna I wanna go back to something though quickly with you because we were just talking about religion in this movie and I think because it's not a religion because it's not a religion because it's not a religion they kind of compared god dick sizes in this because they're like they're like remember they're like they're like he's like krom is the strongest and then he's like yeah well my guy's four wins how are you gonna beat wind and he was like oh i don't know (laughs) it was really weird it was like interesting it was amazing what was the line i wrote it down um where he goes oh dude the way he asks, he's like, what gods do you pray to? What gods do you pray to? Yeah, that was yeah. such, an, was, that, that was yeah. such a good way of, like, I kind of wish people in real life did that. Like, yeah, what like, gods do you pray to? Like, it was like, such a, like, pragmatic way of, like, Yeah, it was kind of, like, someone. epic. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Oh, also, he punches a camel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, it was, like, straight okay, up I, punches I, I, a camel. When that happens, like, the camel fucking buckles over, yeah, too. Like, and it was, like, like when did he actually that punch that? Fucking camel? <laughs> I had the same thought. It looked so real. I was like, wait, there's no way they got a, a fake camel to move that realistically. So, uh, speaking of look- things looking real, did you notice that all of the violence in the movie fully felt like it was like consequential it felt like totally. this shit was happening totally. and like it, it felt like oh this is why violence is wrong yeah this is bad yeah i agree as I opposed agree. to like shit that's like no blood everything is fine everything is sanitized this was like vicious it made i agree it looked like whoa dude people like fucking blood is bursting out of people i honestly that like it was uh, to me i was like I was like, this movie, 
looks amazing. Dude, like, it, this I, movie could have been shot fucking yesterday. And I it would honestly have held like it, it, it totally. And even the practical effects, we'll get to the practical effects, but I wanted to talk. Uh, we meet Valeria, which I, we got to talk about Valeria. Amazing. She's so amazing. cool. So uh, cool. I like, honestly, like this, this is like a cool character. I mean, in terms of a woman, it, it like back in the days of like when they didn't think about or talk about these things. Um, there are really cool things about her where she like, does have a lot of her own agency. Like she kind of pursues the relationship openly with Schwartzy. And it, like, I thought that was really cool. Like, cool. cool. Yeah. She, she's, she's incredible because she has this physicality again, all of her scenes shot and wide. Yeah. And it's like, you see how things are done and you see things progress in a way where it's like, where she's, Fully fighting these things. No shit. Like, One, like there was that scene yes. between them where she, where they first meet. Yeah. And they're at the bar, and she tries to steal the jewelry, and he like grabs her, and then like slides the rings onto her finger. Oh, that's and later when they're yeah 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 yeah. But yeah. it's like it's it's incredible to, to that scene is just like that's an incredibly like touching well, they moment. Should, that's what you 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 mentioned that they eat a lot together. I think the eating together and the shooting themselves at tables together sort of like creates this like idea of intimacy. Like yeah, they know each they, other, you know, like I visually you just show what's happening because they barely speak to each other too. Totally. And I really like believed their relationship. Like I actually got really emotional at certain times in this movie. I felt like to me, they were better able to build intimacy with no dialogue and just showing in pictures how they look at each other and ex like their physicality towards each other than like Star Trek does in like any of like the show. Shut up, Wesley. Like the, that show is so bad at creating like this idea of intimacy. Like they they never make it believable. No, and, it, like they just never. They're even with like dialogue, not uh, able to for some reason. Yeah, I mean, I guess like because they don't have the. Not to like tangent to too much to Star Trek, but like, like from a story perspective, if you don't have visuals to back things up, right? Then, Are you then saying like no, the angles? Yeah, and there's the, no like, possibility of well, not just the angles, but the sets. The it's fact also that you shot to, for TV. Yeah, it's shot in, for TV. It's, it's in, not uh, like it's in like um, medium, full screen, yeah, not yeah. widescreen. Um, and it's it's just like. Uh, that's that's the way they can communicate really quickly. Yeah. Whereas this movie, this movie's fucking two hours and ten minutes. I I <laughs> like, loved it. I lo honestly, but you okay, said it, you. I did feel like it did drag in the middle. Did, like it, you it, said it was boring. No, you, you know boring. what? I I I did. I did. I did say it was boring. Um, I regret saying that because it's it's amazing. so fucking not boring. It's dude. so not boring. It's so, it's so it builds in such a way where you're just like, this is so fucking cool. I, you're I right. I fucking you're right. love all this weird slowness and then interspersed like montages of people being friends with each other. You're right. You're right. The pacing is interesting. The pacing is interesting. I think it, it just maybe reads a little bit slow for modern times. Maybe yeah, I don't maybe, know. And, and like maybe it could have just to. been. Yeah, exactly. Um, but let's talk about they climb into this fucking snake tower. Um, so th there's like this whole running theme throughout the movie about all this religion and um, you know like this people worship different gods and whatnot. And like, there's like a huge cult of snakeness that's like established. And a part of the snake groups are the, uh, the fucking, the, the bang crew rocking the eighties bang crew. They're all a part of the snake, um, team snake cult. And, uh, we kind of see, um, the three, you know, thieves go by ropes, which I loved that there were ropes in this. Like yeah. the eighties loved like climbing down the on, 80s in loved things. Deserts. Yes. Jungles, ropes, falling into quick, quicksand yeah. in either a jungle or a fucking uh, desert. And it was just obsessed with it. Schwartz enters uh, the cave with his best friend, Subutai. Uh, a woman is getting <laughs> disrobed um, with uh, in front of this high priest looking dude in what looks like it's a ritual sacrifice. And we find out later that it is, it a, is ritual a ritual sacrifice. sacrifice. This woman is going to allow herself to get eaten by the snake that they all love. A giant fucking snake. snake a giant where the head of the snake is as big as my arm. I 
As your arm? As I, arm. Been, I would this have said, oh, as long is. as your arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. As big as my arm. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Yeah, no. They, so they, Schwartzy steals a jewel. It's the jewel of the snake. I've heard they call it something interesting. And he, I guess, gets this pendant as well. That's the two snakes. That's the symbol of yeah, this yeah, cult. Yeah, he picks that up. Um, and, and he then sees this, like, symbol of these people who he killed, you know, they killed his family. And the fucking snake starts approaching him. I thought this was so cool. And he kills it. He just immediately shoves that in huge sword through its head. And no, 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 no. This is what happens. He uses a knife to start stabbing the fucking snake in the head and it starts freaking out. And Subotai oh, fucking Subotai. throws him his sword. That's and he right. He fucking stabs, he stabs the, the snake into a wall. Yeah. And then uses his sword to cut its fucking head off. That, that and was it looks so, so cool. incredible. That the was... fucking puppet that they made for this snake is so terrifying and so good looking. I, and the way. I agree. Everything is fucking lit in the movie makes you fully believe everything. Yeah. It's yeah. so moody and amazing. So um they touch jewels in that scene that yeah. you told me about, and then they then he he you know, he like puts that thing on her finger oh, yeah, or whatever. He, he puts the ring on her finger. Yeah, and then and then they he gives her the sex eyes, which, you know, like I thought of this was like a sweet moment, and then they have sex. Through the sex montage, we see them like basically bond in this one scene like yeah and i believe it they're, so much they're, they're again eating and drinking throughout like right because the then scene. he becomes like a rich thief yeah and he's like drunk with her and she's like his you know like they're like partners in crime yeah. they're like really like and he then his face falls out into the soup do you remember that oh yeah that outrageous scene where the soup is <laughs> bubbling from yeah. him like yeah. not being able to breathe yeah and like it's just such a quick scene because then she kicks him up suddenly we're met with like these guards i guess yeah. they are because the, they're the dudes that killed his, his like family and no stuff. no yeah, these dude. aren't these are the guards of the king who lost his daughter to the right yeah. max von Sydow. yes the ever forever old max von Sydow. yes yes and and he's a uh the king says i, I wanted to say because he we was love epic dude he was, he was oh epic. my god i and, love and this also, guy also like when when they're looking at him did you notice that they all looked like scolded children they had so much they respect just, for him they had like I but was it was like, amazingly acted because they would be like fucking kids it's, yeah no they totally like, like and they are they are kids he says he's 24 years old but mentally did, he, this, did they say i yes, was joking okay. that, they, that he was like oh man arnold must be 17 years old in this movie <laughs> He's actually like in his thirties, but like, yeah, in real life he was in his thirties, I think. But like in the role, he's like, I'm, you know, 24, 20 years ago when I was four years old. Right, and right, I was like, right. they do. I was yeah, like, they oh, okay. I was like, wow, okay, uh, sure, I'll believe that. I was like, yeah, why sure. not? He's I mean, been he in was, the sun. He was pushing, 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 pushing a fucking thing. thing. Exactly, exactly. So they get told by this king. They get fucking told up and down that uh, the king's daughter is in the snake cult, and he's like. I, you know, my town is overrun with these snake cult people. She, like, will die for him, basically. I want her back. Like, get her back to me. Here are, and he said, this wait, is... Wait, wait, I wrote this line down, okay. too. Go, 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 do it. Do what it. outrageousness! I was like, this was a really touching scene for me, because I really like the emotionality that he, like, he's like, I would trade all the jewels yeah, and everything. Says, that was so cool. He says, what he when say? the jewels lose their sparkle... Yes. And it's like, and then he says something about gold also Losing getting... its luster? Yeah, it looted. Comes the time. When the jewels cease to sparkle, when the gold loses its luster, it loses something like and that, it, yeah. And it was like, or like getting dull, and it's yes. like, and then he says, he says, if you get her back, you'll have enough to be kings yourselves. yourselves. Oh, I love that. Such a good line. I love that so much, and it was like. I was very moved by this scene. Another scene that I was immediately moved after by was when Valeria is like, she's like not convinced and she's talked to Subutai and she's like, uh, let's just leave with this shit. And then she like talks to Schwartzy and she's like, we have warmth. And this, oh my God. Such a good line. Such a good line because they, they have warmth and like, she makes a convincing point and I feel like she convinces him almost, but in the middle of the night, he leaves her. What were you going to say? What I was going to say was at this point, it seems like Thalsa Doom is like a complete B-plot. 
Yeah, that's yeah. the crazy thing I about the agree. movie is that, and that's the 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 predator model too. Is that totally. the first half of the movie is so not about what the rest of the movie, but the established the, characters. Yeah, they, the first half has so much consequence in the second half. Yeah, but like you get to learn who these people are through a completely different plot because the movie's about them being thieves at this point. He doesn't want his revenge yet. Right. Uh, totally. Totally. And I love that they did that. Um. I was going to ask you this. So he goes on this long trek, right? He leaves he leaves um, Valeria and he goes on this. He ignores her advice completely. They don't have warmth as far as he's concerned. Uh, well, or, or they do, but he just wants to he wants to do this revenge plot. Um, so he goes on this long mission um, and we see a lot of seasons pass again. I'm like, is he just going through different like areas where there's snow or is it like are we led to believe that a lot of time has passed? Is this when he's like going to see the wizard? He, he, yes. Yes, okay. it is. Okay. Yeah. The, I think the implication is that like throughout the entire movie, a long time has passed. Right. Okay. Okay. So he meets this like guy who turns out to be the narrator, the guy with the really gravelly voice. Who's Plays like, Master Splinter in the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. You will listen now. Oh, I knew I recognized <laughs> yeah, that voice. Dude. Oh my God, that's such a... How did you guess? How did you guess? How did you guess? Um, so, um, yeah, and then he's a very yelly bald guy. He's a wizard. Um, they have some kind of understanding. It's so cool because they just start laughing with each other. They're just like, ah! Yeah. Like, they're just like immediately, like, it's like, what? <laughs> like, what did you guys, like, understand each yeah, other so dude, well? that's what I love about the movie. It just, like, lets things happen, and you're just like, oh, okay, I guess that happened. We saw it happen. I have to say, dude, so he, he gets told by this wizard about Tulsa Doom, and then he gets on a camel because he's gonna ride this camel. Did it seem to you like this camel did not want to be ridden by Schwartz? <laughs> like, 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 there's so much weight on this. Oh my part, god! Like, it seemed thing. like the camel gets fucking pissed. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but he like, holds on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, it was like kudos to both of those <laughs> actors in that scene because that was not a hard scene or not an easy scene to film. Um, so uh, he gets to uh, this like area where the the um, snake cult people are congregating, and he finds this priest. I love this scene, dude. The gay priest. Oh my god! Oh my says, god! You should be so proud of your body. Oh my! He's like I love, dude, love this. This I, is so outrageous. I love that the homoerotic weird sex cult. Scene. I loved it so much. Um, it was cool because Schwartzy like totally plays along, and he's like, yeah. Let's go. Like, let's let's yeah. do this. He's like, let's do this. He's like fully saying it's it, he might as well have said, like, I'm going to suck your dick. I'm we're going to take you to the forest and you and will the get your dick sucked. So into it. He's so into it. It's and he's like he but he plays it cool. Yeah. It, I love this scene because it was like it wasn't about gay panic. It no, was about, it was very real. It was yeah. very like we're both so into this. And except I feel like I feel like Schwartz, did. Experiment. You, oh, definitely. It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is. Um, he beats him up and steals his robe, does not have sex with him. This was not nice. Um, but he gets access to the snake cult and he's like, oh, yeah, hey, I'm here. I'm one of you guys. But the guard, one of the guards finds that medallion that he brought along with him. And then dudes, the, the bang crew is like, fuck, Schwartzy. We know he killed. Like, they realize who he is because he stole that medallion from that like temple so they know that he's from the temple the other temple where that snake got slaughtered right isn't that the first time we see Thulsa Doom in like from like the beginning of the movie yes yes in this like, scene that's is where that's where you're like first encounter him yes like you as a as a real like leader guru guy yeah and so they beat Schwartzy up and oh my god they fucking crucify him don't they but wait wait first we got to talk about this scene because he's an infidel because he doesn't believe in snakes and he stabbed a snake and right and, he killed his pet and he, then and he doesn't realize and that he did it dude james earl jones thulsa doom does something so cool to demonstrate that flesh is stronger than steel he's like oh he asks one of his yeah they they Show it in a wide where James Earl Jones is in the foreground, and, and she is, asks she, a woman, she, a follower. She's on top of a, a, a like a hill, like a cliff, like a cliff, and she just fully jumps off. And in a wide, you see her fall all the way down in front of James Earl Jones, and she like face plants, like, like it's it, fucking nuts. I thought that was. 
uh, like amazingly executed. Yeah, it was uh, so well choreographed, all of it. I I couldn't believe it. Um, so then, yes, he gets crucified, which is outrageous. Like uh, with this, the movie does not stop with the outrageousness. What outrageous? It's because he gets attacked by vultures, and instead of like allowing himself to get eaten by vultures, he eats the vulture. Like he bites the vulture's neck and kills it. Um, and then finally, his saving grace, Subutai, arrives and he passes out and gets. No, no, no. This is amazing because the way Subutai comes is that he comes over a hill and then falls back under, and you think at first that he's a mirage. Yes. And you're like, oh, and it's no, gone for a long time. A long time. And then you're like, Yes, he did exist. Oh my god. It's such a good um, it, it's such a beautifully executed scene because it's just like you see um he gives you this moment of suspense yeah. where you're just like is he real? And then he becomes real and you're like, yes. Yes, I know. It's saved. amazing. Schwartz is saved. Um they take him Valeria and and um Subutai, you know, like thief crew, take um, Schwartzy to the the monk, the wizard we met from the beginning with a gravelly voice. Um, and they're like, we're going to kill you if you don't save him. So he like draws on him. I thought this was so like, they, this was such amazing attention to detail. Like just like draws these interesting looking characters on his face that look like his, a totally body. different language, his whole body. And like, he gets saved from ghosts that try and take him that night. Yeah, dude. I was like, wow, what an interesting way to, you know, like, yeah, he's like he puts they might take him. He puts a spell on Arnold. Yeah. On Conan, uh, and to uh, to save him from demons that are gonna take him to the like other world. That's a crazy, insane it was, it was detail cool. that they just added in. There's a whole that plays out as a whole scene. I know, and um, Valeria shows her like like amazing strength of will in this scene because she like jumps on Schwartz and she's like stabbing at ghosts with a yeah. knife. And the ghosts look amazing. Dude, they're just like I was gonna, drawn. are they like rotoscope? Yeah. What is that? Okay, so like they later eat, uh, Schwartz is alive. And then basically the next day he's like ready to go back to Thulsa Doom. Like he does not waste any time. He like grabs his sword gloriously. Like that was cool. The like, t oh, just, that was when he's a, on the beach yeah, and he's and just like swinging his, swinging sword, his sword around. Th this is a literal metaphor for dick swinging. I totally, <laughs> but, but, but it's, it's kind of crazy that they made him in, like, Weirdly graceful, like for such a totally, big body. Totally. Like it was I like, was thinking the same thing. He moved so gracefully. By the way, do you know how much that fucking sword costs? How much? How did you guess? How did you guess? <laughs> how, how much how much do you think that sword cost? Oh my god. Okay, so you're setting me up that it's a lot. I'm gonna say that it's six thousand dollars. It's fucking ten thousand dollars. Wow! And they made two of them. Wow. Okay. Cool. I mean, it looks so real. They did not like cheap out on any part no, of this movie no, it at all. It doesn't look. It looks like it has weight to it. Totally. Totally. And he like carries it so well. It's it's great. Um, they put on war paint and head into this mountain where something. The war been... paint looks awesome, amazing. Look, I was like, so cool. But it also looks like they could have done it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it, it fully, does. It fully does. It looks like they did it, but it looks amazing. Yeah, <laughs> like they were like they were like really good at it for some reason. Um, there's a hole in a mountain. There's like some workers. They're mining for something. It seems like they're mining for the food of the snake. Is that what I'm led to believe? And they put body parts in it. Because later oh, we yeah, see, they, it's like a it's green their goo. Food. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. They're like making like a stew out of So people. they're like a cannibal cult. Kind of, yeah, probably. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, they just imply all I mean, this shit it's, heavily. It's also revealed later on that like James Earl Jones is... Thulsa Doom is just a big snake. He's a snake, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh my God, the reveal to that. Okay, let's get to that. Um, so naked people are being tortured. The music, the score, dude. Oh my god. The score, which sounds suspiciously like the Total Recall the score. Yeah, I was gonna talk fully to you not, about that. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith. Oh like, my god. Like fully not Jerry, Jerry Goldsmith. Do you think Jerry had some polls? Because Jerry was later. Yeah, he was he was a uh, total recall. Yeah, nineteen eighty eight. Like, like but or ninety nine like, ninety this this seems like that was like fully like that 
they fully aped that score because it's so like i think so too i think you're right um okay so holy shit they see an orgy, which is amazing. I like that they kind of like heavily imply, like they show the sex movements, but no one's actually having sex. They're just like writhing, <laughs> which is always like weird, but it's kind of hot though. Like, and they had that medium or like really wide sort of like, you just see a bunch of bodies writhing on the ground and you're like, whoa, this orgy is so sexy. I totally like just fully like mentally like added mental canon of just like, I'm picturing them having sex. And like super ties like, this is paradise. And we see the princess for the first time, who I have to say, for being a princess, I mean, I don't know. I was going to ask you about this. Like, they didn't really, like, ma- choose an actor that would, like, really outshine Valeria, you know? Like, yeah. it, she seems just, like, sort of, like, just like a normal person. Like, just, like, not very, like, even just, like, the way they kind of, like, she's not dressed, like, especially, like, epically or anything like yeah. not very princess like so it's like did they do that on purpose to not take attention away from valeria or i don't know i mean like because valeria- spoiler alert later on schwartzy just like is like well this is the last woman here so i guess i'm gonna marry her oh yeah um, Which is another thing of like, dude, come on. They treat women like total fucking property. Yeah. The only person in this movie that has any agency is Valeria. And even that's debatable in, at times, I would say. Yeah. Because think- she's so devoted to Schwartzy. I feel like, you know, like, okay, she does find warmth. And like, that's set up as a crucial part of her character. But like, we also see a very capable, like self-sufficient person. And I was just like, hmm, I kind of like, just see it's two halves I don't really buy. You know, it's a, know. a thief that... I, I feel like the world is set up enough of in enough of a way where you can not necessarily forgive that, um, but you can sort of address it as a as a character flaw. Okay, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like a Schwartzy like, character flaw. Yeah, like a Schwartzy oh, character flaw. Or, or like because because she is so devoted and he just leaves and it's not like he it's set up in a again it's he's a barbarian yeah. like he's not a good person yeah yeah okay, he's just okay. like a person who's getting through this shitty life yeah in and a he's way like that got this princess, like trauma yeah. of like this ptsd of seeing his mom's head cut off and his yeah, whole dude. village get murdered okay like we you're not gotta, gonna grow into a good person be coming from that kind of background fully agree uh, we have to talk about James Earl Jones because they set up this thing so well. Anna and I were watching this and all of a sudden his face starts like, like just subtly like pushing. And you're like, wait, that kind of looks like puppet James Earl Jones. The the, you know, he does have puppet face for sure, <laughs> but like... It, it looks, looks pretty good. It looks pretty it good. It looks so much more convincing than some of the CGI I see now. I agree. It's, it's, I agree. It's, it is a puppet, but like it would be a puppet, dude. <laughs> it would fully be a puppet. <laughs> if a guy was going to turn into a snake the way he did, it would totally be a puppet. I think more so than like in real life, it wouldn't be as smooth and like, you know, as like CGI has led us to believe in modern days, it would yeah. be like kind of plasticity and puppety and like weird, like <laughs> uncanny valley. You'd just be like, oh my God, what is that? Yeah, it would be, it would be. It would be amazing. Okay, so he turns into a snake. He slithers out of his clothes. Uh, Valeria sets one of the tapestries on fire because she's fucking badass. Supatai starts a fight. They literally start just chopping guards. It's amazing. Necks get sliced in this. I was just like, holy shit, heads get chopped off. I was like, this was like, like really violent. good. Like, so violent, violent. Violent, but earns its violence. And it, it's, it's gratuitous, but it's not like, I don't know. It just felt like... I, it felt consequential. Totally. Totally felt consequential. I was all in. I was all in. Schwartzy spills the green goo that was mined earlier. And like, I was just like, man, the bosses start coming. I was like, the the banged guys, they just start like coming and they're like, they are, you know, they originally killed Schwartzy's parents. So they, he's got a bone to pick with these guys. And you definitely feel a boss vibe, right? Yeah. Like totally. you're definitely like, oh, he's you got to the first boss. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, one of the bosses comes with a big giant hammer and smashes that pillar Holy shit, man. Like, just the attention to detail. I'm like, this is mind-blowing. The Evil Bang crew, I would say, gets back together in this scene. Yeah. We're putting the band back together. Um, So they come out and they swear revenge. Dude, I mean, the, the... 
this does not stop. They do not stop with the punches here because what happens next, dude? Oh my the god. The bow and arrow. Oh my god. Please, if you want to. Thulsa Doom. Thulsa Doom. Fucking pulls a, sn- a small snake out, stretches it out into a like an arrow to put in a bow, and then shoots it at killing Valeria. Killing Valeria. Killing Valeria. And not just that. When they when Arnold fucking um fucking Conan uh what's her name? Valeria and Asubatai yeah. escape. Yeah. Fucking with the princess. Ar- with the princess. They've saved the princess, by the way. Arnold pulls the snake out of Valeria, stretches it out, and it looks fake at first, and then you see him throw it away, and it's fully a real snake. Yeah, I, I was like, is that... I was like, oh my god, was this before there was a cruelty to animals act? Fully. Because, like, the amount of... Also, like, horses fall down in this movie. Horses like, fall down. Man, like... Get punched in the face. Like, camels get, like, ridden by 260-pound dudes. I was like, man, okay, so she's dying another heartbreaking scene where i also teared up because she says i'm cold i'm cold it brings it back poetically to the warmth because she's like keep me warm keep me warm i was like holy shit asks to get kissed i was just like the physical intimacy in this movie was just like i think she this is what she says let my last breath be into your mouth that's so weirdly intimate it's so intimate i loved it so much this movie really like i i I just can i explain the next scene please uh the next scene they take valeria back yes to to the wizard i was gonna ask you about this light her on fire in a ritualistic burn yeah and subotai fucking cries and he's like I love why, this. Why are you crying? And he's like, I cry because he doesn't cry. Because he doesn't. That's so weirdly poetic. I, it showed a lot of like insane like tenderness and like it just like you didn't think. Yeah, it explored you know, their it friendship. Did, it didn't make it seem like they were like going to make making the audience think any less of Subutai. But it does kind of enforce the like idea of like toxic masculinity with like, like he's well, not he going to cry. cry. But you stoic. know, but, but it's I mean, like, I guess they have to show that like, I mean, this was the time and like. He was like it's it's also like a visual thing like it doesn't necessarily i get i get the the sort of problematic nature well, of no, it but but there, like, but there is a, a a value to at certain points being stoic like sure, sure. It, it, like he's 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 taking on a, a burden of his own that that is his own alone yeah for uh, sure. and like like i don't know again he's a barbarian so it's, well that's true i i thought it was interesting we don't see him mourn her much but we see his resolve get stronger to kind of fight these guys and really like you know get his revenge i mean i guess nothing of consequence happens for her dying which is interesting i, I what feel do you mean? well what do you think happens of consequence like she dies but she they said just, she like, set up this is what happens she says to him um when i die I will still be here to oh. save you. And then later on shows up almost like an, in a deus ex oh machina. Oh my God, kind you're right. Uh, and and she does save him. That was, okay. All right. She's, it's fully set up. You're for, right. For you're right. To, that's interesting. Okay. So that's, I didn't think about that. That's really cool. Um, so we see, you know, they're back at the monks, um, I guess, what do you want to call it? Area. We see, um, you know, this montage of them setting up for this epic fight. Uh, and they, they're putting on like shields and, and, oh my God, it's so cool, dude. Yeah. I love the montages of this movie. Armor. And they explain how he has the armor. Cause like how they, uh, how the monk or the wizard has the armor. Cause like a bunch of like soldiers like die there so cool that is a weirdly specific touch that's awesome. right like they just like explain that um and then uh schwarzy prays he prays to crom oh, and he goes weird monologue i loved it it's so i loved good. it he it goes so he good. goes uh grant me revenge and if you do not listen then, then to hell, hell with, with you. you grant me revenge and if you do not listen 
in the hell with you. Which I was like, whoa. Yeah, dude. That was like, I was like, whoa, this is the movie The Hell With You comes from? That's, yeah, I've like, had this exact little, same thought. It sounded a little awkward. It did but sound. Like, because, but, like, oh. but like, it was like, wow, this is still so impactful. The hell with you. Okay, so the banged crew arrives and they start banging. Um, they basically start smashing Schwartzy with a hammer. Do you remember getting oh, yeah. smashed with a hammer? I love this part. Um, all in the day, too. They, it's all like action in the day. They kill so many people. So many people. So many people. Again, I was like, feel the violence in yeah. all of the scenes. And like, they, it, I love that line that Subutai says of like, we're gonna, does he say something like, we're gonna be two people against the, something like that? Like, like against this whole army of people? Oh, yeah. They say that like, they like yeah, bring it up. We're gonna be three people against hundreds or something, something like, like that. that yeah yeah not hundreds because you don't get a sense that it's hundreds but it's a lot it's, it's like lot 40 people. people it's like a realistic number that would be from <laughs> yeah, totally. from a different time it's like crappy it's like, yeah if, if but, you pulled it out to a wide you're like oh this isn't that epic <laughs> yeah, yeah totally but but it's shot so well and it looks it so it epic. looks so epic it looks so epic um so they set up a trap and one of the bangs guys smashes a fake decoy i love this scene and like the, that stabby thing turns around around that turnstile that's another thing that 80s loved is like traps traps <laughs> oh my god oh my god dude it, Booby like, traps. like like it was described to me as um when he home alones them you guys give up oh yeah thirsty for more he totally he home alones, home alones, them. alones he fully them. home alones them um and this is the part you were talking about ghost valeria helps in this scene because schwartz is about to get attacked and uh yeah he's on the floor and he's about to face a person who like in fucking commando bennett who seems oh. fully not capable of beating Being up the bad guy yeah the main like bad guy Schwartzy, oh. but but he's, he's like weird like fat strong <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about what he ripped he's fat guy ripped totally um dude doom in this scene is so gutless <laughs> like he just he's like such a piece of shit <laughs> Like, this is the first time you see that he's straight up a piece of shit because he fully makes another one of those yeah. uh, snake to, to bow and kill arrows the to kill the princess. I was like, and what? she goes, she says, Father, yeah. do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, I thought that what was, was, I was that. Well, so I was going to say. he has a spell on those people, eh? I that, was, like, weird cult, snake cult. Okay, so do you think that she was calling him father? Yes. It was, like, daddy, sort of, like, daddy, daughter. I like, think they were they were all under a spell. Because at the end, they just isn't she kind of his, like, sex slave, too? Doesn't he want to marry her? Yeah, fully. But this is this is what I'm saying. Like, in the at the end of the movie, nobody seems sad that their religion is gone. That's they don't true. seem like they're the cult. They just seem like they're like, they're oh, off the is, spell. Yeah. That's true. And they start throwing their, like, okay, torches okay, in the okay. water. Let's, let's get to that. The So, the uh, Doom is among his followers back at the Snake Temple. Um, um, after having defeated, oh no! So sorry, I missed the part where that she calls out father, and then uh, Subutai and the monk save her with a shield. That was cool. Um, just had to bring that up because, yeah. like, that was an awesome scene. Um, and I like that it wasn't Schwartzy that saved her. I like that it was like yeah. Subutai and the monk together. Okay, so Doom is back among his followers. It's nighttime. The mood is very ominous. Schwartzy arrives, um, and Doom tells. This followers, oh my god, dude, this was so cool. The dude tells his followers that it's basically Judgment Day and they should just go kill their families and shit. Oh, I was yeah. like, I was like, what? <laughs> oh, dude. Was like, he's straight up a cult leader. It was like fully a cult. Yeah, and this is the kind of scene where like you feel like the the curtain is like pulled back and you get to see like whoa it's the humanity of this it's like less like m magical and more like yeah. he's a weird cult leader that's just like in making his followers different world totally totally and i thought and that was all cool. the same tricks work and okay. instead of like them like going to do that conan arrives and they face each other and you just know some shit's about to go down i love the way that you you don't expect the things that are going to happen in this movie like he like kills him so easily but it's earned it's like it's, it's so weirdly anticlimactic but but it, like oh. actually like so amazingly subtle i agree i agree 100 percent because he, because he goes through this entire death match yeah and then it's just like, no, this is my, you're the weakest one. And yeah. I just, I wanted to kill you last. Yeah. You know? And, 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 um, he, uh, you know, doom really is grasping at straws here. Cause he's like, you're, 
don't exist unless I exist. You're nothing without me. That oh, was yeah. Cool he tries like, to pull a I'm your father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of tried. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He's like, I brought you in. And not just that. Did you notice that um, Schwartzy pulls out his father's sword? Oh, my God. You're so right. And, and okay. the father's sword gets cut in half. Yes. It's I like a d- metaphor. He, for and like Oedipus yeah. killing the, the, the penis. Wait, of the older Oedipus? father. Wait, so like he chops his father's sword, Is right? It, an Oedipal complex doesn't have any killing of the father, does yeah, it? Yeah, kill the father, sleep with the oh, mother. sleep with the mother. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, so it's total Oedipus. Like he's like taking the mantle as the patriarch. Yeah, I guess so. He's but, killing all the patriarchs, yeah, basically. Yeah, that's true. Including the, the memory the, of his yeah. father. Um, so, um, okay, so he, we, he's on the mantle chops him but i like that they did this because like he chops remember in the beginning chops the mother's head off in one foul swoop this takes like three chops and uh, like oh yeah he fully fucking cuts his head off and it was like it's really earned right like it's like i thought this i thought this was cool um it was very metaphorical very oedipus very very like you know uh daddy dumb complex um and uh and then on the mantle just anticlimactically like throws the head I in know. front of all of the and like you hear followers. you hear the, the head hit the steps yeah it, and Which, it's like whoa dude that that is what that would sound like yeah i i thought that was a really cool choice and all of the followers it, it's cool how they like very slowly start realizing. Yeah. It's like, you're like, like what's going to happen? Are they going to like, are they going to kill? Are they going to like riot? No, they just start throwing their flames yeah, in the, into that the pond. Pond, pond and they, they, they just walk away. Totally. And I was going to say, like, there's like hundreds of followers. And when you look at that pond later on, there's like 40 yeah, of those yeah, like yeah, things. Totally, I was like, totally. so, so, like, so many of them just stay followers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're just going to make a new cult religion out maybe, of it. Maybe. Fully, oh. With Conan being part of the, part of it. Oh, I, I can't believe it. Oh, and then he fully just takes the princess by the hand and is just like, pull, takes her and is like, well, I'm going to marry you. Well, yeah. Okay. So um, I have to tell you. I we haven't talked about how these followers look like the KKK. I was like, what was up with that? Like, could they not have? And they're fully a black guy. Could they? I know, I know. Like, I I was like, I mean, that's like cool that they you know reverse that imagery. But I was just like, man, like, could they not have picked a different robe? Like, this is like weird. They're all white people too. They were all white people. They were most mostly. Um. Anyway, uh, deep in thought with his fist in his face, Schwartzy is at the end contemplating, which I thought was cool. He's like, they, they, I, they get weird different shots. They kind of like blend. What's that called when they blend? They crossfade. Yeah, they crossfade shots. I thought that was cool. Yeah, um, that, it looked so many, so many transitions in the movie were so weird. They had like wipes. They had like crossfades. Yeah. They had crossfades that didn't span any time it was just like the you they they use that as a transition between cuts yeah and it was outrageous yeah um so all the followers are gone he takes a he shot puts a, one of those dangly candles oh yeah that was so cool yeah, he like fully really like cool. does like like a not a shot put what's that no, called it's a, not it's shot, not discus uh, throw it's uh, it's not discus what's that like one that it looks like the thing that it was is it discus i don't know no it's not it doesn't matter he throws it sets the entire temple on fire she kneels when he walks by her like as to show him that she's worshiping him does is he? that she kneels i don't remember that oh my god i was like okay what's this movie doing with these women but all right fine um he takes her hand they marry and then basically at the end i don't know i i was like i was pissed because i was like he, he just buried valeria like literally just buried I mean, valeria i know i know it's everything everything that that's that's like an a shitty thing can always just be put off as like he's a barbarian. Okay, it's, all right, sure. It's like what he's gonna do. And um, now it's you're... pretty consistent with the character. Your favorite scene: he's an old man at the end, I love him which as an I thought old was man. so. He look, but he doesn't look like he looks like he's like fifty. He doesn't look like he's old. Yeah, 
old. Yeah, he doesn't. I, I, I mean, like that. They, you'd probably die at 50. At, and at that time. But he doesn't look as old as his old dad, who was like, just like cavernously <laughs> wrinkled. I guess they can't make all those like caverns on his face. Um, but in the epilogue, we're told that he he's a king by his own hand, which is cool. And that they have adventures. They go west. Like, oh, dude, can I tell you something? What? Can I tell you what the, the legend of Conan was supposed to be? The third movie? How did you guess? How did you guess? Um, okay, dude. Wait, are they not going to make it? They're not going to make no, it. No, that would have been cool. Dude, let me tell you. It was directed it, it, by the it, same guy. He's just fully Republican now. <laughs> no, no, no. This is, this is what it was supposed to be about. Um, it was supposed to be about old man Conan, like from that image. Yeah. Where he has a beard and long hair. Yeah. Um, and what happens is he goes on an unforgiven style like last adventure, like Unforgiven is in the Clint Eastwood movie. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and it's him like fighting one last battle and then dying at the end. That's cool. That's cool. And it would have been about his like legendary status. Yeah, yeah. I I would have been into that. Um, just lastly, because uh, we're at wait, the- hold on. It would be one of those soft reboots, though. <laughs> where where they it's, disregard where it's like, the second one? Yeah, or? they disregard the second one, and you're just Aww. like, uh, I don't know how I feel about this. Something feels weirdly phony about this. Fair enough. Yeah, no, I don't think it would have been good, because nothing good gets made when it's remade. But um, the end credits, I thought, was a weird choice. I wanted to talk to you about this. They put the, like, bad guy symbol as... I mean, yeah, really, that's... I, I did like that. I like it. I like it. I, I feel mean, like he took over. I feel like he just took over that Oh, you cult. think he became the yeah, snake dude. leader? Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we disregarding the second one? Is the second one a prequel? What's the second one? I don't it's know. The prequel. second one is still, like... It's a sequel. It's, a, it's in, in between the beginning of the movie to the end where he's not an old man. So it's in between Oh, okay. That okay. Time. Sure, sure. But, like, also the plot of the second one and, the like, the whole production seems like it's supposed to be a bigger production right but like it felt like crappier because they just didn't have the money well at the end it's really crappy looking like the the, the kind of the, it looks like a you know what it looked like to me it's uh, the 60s batman where it was like to the bat fall right and it's just like something in the a, background and they're like kind of like going up and like doing a really fast focus. Like it just seemed like that at the end. Yeah, for sure. It seemed a little crappy, but I was into it. Um, dude, uh, what, how many, how many Schwartzies would you give this? Um, and let me clarify that Schwartzies aren't like this rating system is out of 10, one out of 10 Schwartzies, one to 10. It's not how good a movie is it in general we can get to that but how good a schwartzy movie is it out of 10 and then we'll talk our rating out of 10 generally as a movie okay so how many schwartzies would you give this movie i would give this movie seven schwartzies out of 10 okay and i would say that because you only get hints still of like how incredibly charismatic he can be yes i agree without being like fully evolved but the charming nature of him it's not there being, the, hold on hold on no. uh the charming nature of him not being fully evolved is um like really charismatic in and of itself yeah we get a we get a very like uh early you know Hints at his greatness, Schwartzy, not a not a like a like a fully realized Schwartzy. Yeah. Um, so actually, I gave this movie a six point five. Six point five. Listen, I I think we still have a lot of Schwartzy to get to. So I just think that this movie is great. I would give this movie an eight point five out of ten. As, as, a a, as a movie. Yeah, totally. It's totally. an incredible movie. It's an incredible like, movie. It's like a really, like, got its own world. It's like a really, really strong a movie. F- completely self-actualized world. Totally. With self-actualized characters. And, like, a lot of, like, poetic, you nuance. know, stuff. Nuance. Yeah, that goes into both visually and verbally. And very much told with very little words. So that's a feat in and of itself. But as a Schwartzy movie, I mean, you know, like... It's Schwartzy. We love Schwartzy, but he's not. I would you know, fully watch that movie again. Oh my god! I kind of want to watch it with <laughs> yeah. you right now. Because um, now we can actually talk about it while the movie's oh playing. Oh my god, dude! I want to listen to audio, audio commentary. <laughs> I heard that the audio commentary. So um, the next segment of uh, that I'd like to do, and it's our final segment for the evening, is I'd like to talk about how did you guess. 
Uh, our segment called How Did You Guess? How Did You Guess? Uh, and um, basically, I wanted to ask you if there's any bit of trivia that you know about this movie that you think is interesting. Um, mine was just going to be that the audio, audio commentary is hilarious because, um, as has been stated, Mike, uh, or what is it, John, Vil- John Milanus, Mike, Mike Milanus, John Milanus is a, a wa- wacky Republican and Schwartzy is also a wacky Republican, but he's also just like describes what he does in movies. So the audio commentary of this is apparently pretty funny. Um, that's the only interesting thing I know about this movie. Do you know any, uh, how did you guess about this movie? How did you guess? Well, I said the 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 sword thing. Oh, that is a really good factoid. We we should save factoids like that for the how did you guess segment. Um, but yeah, um, overall amazing movie. Um, what are we talking about next time? Do you know? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about Conan the Destroyer? Well, is that the next movie? I don't think it is. I think he did Terminator. In I'm between. just looking it up quick. So Arnold. Uh, it's going to come up with Arnold Schwarzenegger, IMDb. His next movie was Conan the Destroyer. Immediately after. Immediately after. I mean, Arnold, yeah, two, you, two years later, 1984. Same year that Terminator was released, but um, apparently it was released before. So um, so next movie we're talking about is Conan the Destroyer, direct sequel. That's. I mean, I think it's going to be the only one that's immediately after a direct sequel because Schwarzy later didn't like doing sequels, right? How did you guess? Is that... That was a thing, right? That he was. I mean, he did Terminator. No, but he said he would never do a sequel unless it was Terminator. I, I guess, yeah. Terminator is the only thing that had a yeah, probably. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, so. Oh um, no, the no, he wasn't the Expendables. He was also in those. Oh okay, yeah. I don't count those. That's like a fun thing. That's he just did that for like a small paycheck. Um, okay. So next uh, next uh, episode, we're talking about Conan the Destroyer. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.